I'm Michael. That's not important. What is important is this. It's a NEMA 17 stepper motor. It's what you have in your 3D printer. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it right now. What this is, is the motor that drives all the moving components in your printer. This one here, as you can see there, is a 1.8 degree stepper motor. You also get them in 0 0.9 degrees and that affects the amount of pulses needed for this motor to make a full rotation. 200 steps will make this turn one full rotation and 400 steps will make a 0 0.9 degree stepper motor turn one full rotation. Getting back to that 1.7 as far as the NEMA goes, that's the distance between these over here, it's 1.7 inches, which is odd because that's about the only thing in here that is in Imperial, everything else is metric. Speaking of metric, the shaft is five millimeters in diameter. Some of them can be different, different size motors, different manufacturers, they can be different, but in general, they probably a five millimeter shaft. The shaft can be round, or it can be flat on the one side, makes it easier for these grub screws to bite onto them. On top of the shaft is the pulley, and on this pulley, you'll see it has teeth. Those teeth, in this case, is a GT2, means that it's two millimeters between the tops of these teeth. It can also be GT2.5, what I've got over here, are the two different belts. There you can see, and this is GT2, that's GT2.5. The incorrect belt will slide over the teeth, goes both ways like that, won't actually hold onto it, where the correct belt will actually bite onto it and turn the pulley the way that it should. Right, speaking of turning the pulley, that is done by the electronics. These motors have two coils inside and four wires. You do get them with six or eight wires as well, but for 3D printers, 90% of the time, they are gonna be just the four wires. Now, how these coils work is it's two coil pairs. When you energize the one coil pair, it turns one rotation. Energize the other pair, it turns one further rotation. Energize them in reverse, it turns in the opposite direction. So, how does it work? This coil runs in, runs around the coil, and runs out here. To make sure that you wire these correctly, you have to wire them in pairs. Now, what I've done with this motor is I've actually shrink wrapped it, testing how, which the coils are, is if you short out two of these wires, like that you'll feel that there's more resistance on here. It's not gonna be as if it doesn't move at all. It's just gonna be more resistance, but you're definitely gonna be able to feel it. If it's the wrong ones, you're not gonna feel any difference in there. Likewise, if it's incorrectly, it's not gonna increase the resistance on here. Other coil pair, same thing, feel extra resistance on. Some of these motors are quite a bit longer than others. When they're really flat, they're called pancake steppers. And that's because it's flat as a pancake. The extra length relates to the amount of torque that this motor has and the power that this motor has because of it. You don't want to go with, with them too short. These ones, because they are a little bit too short, which is why they're not actually in the machine at the moment, they are fine. If you're going to put this, say, on a geared extruder this will work fine for that because the gearing will actually increase the power of the motor and be fine but you want to go with the longer ones i find the sweet spot for me is around 45 millimeters in length seems to have good power the shorter ones you've got to drive quite hard they get hot and that can actually melt parts in your printer if it's plastic or printed parts in your printer the longer these things get the more weight they have and that might not be a problem if it's a static part of a printer but if it's moving around it is going to be a problem so you don't want to actually have these longer than they need to be for a machine this is the last thing these three millimeters which is m3 also metric you don't want to turn them in too far because it can actually back these screws out the back and that'll damage your motor 
So you just want to put them in deep enough to actually hold onto it. You also don't want the screws holding onto the other screw in here. Like I said, it's it is gonna back that out if you actually turn it too hard. You want the screw to bite on the plate that actually holds onto here. So screw in, but not all the way down to the bottom. You don't need to push it in that far. That's pretty much all there is to know about stepper motors. If you'd like to know anything else, feel free to leave comments down below. I'd like you to subscribe, obviously. But other than that, I'll see you next time.